I'd like to play a quick video um, around, from David Ingram. Um, I'm not sure if all of you know who David is, but he's really the godfather of Open Air. Hello, and I think it is probably good evening to everyone at the Open Air Conference in Arnhem in the Netherlands. I'm speaking here as you can see from my garden in St Albans, it's rather a dull time of it year in England and the light is better outside. So forgive me for the corny symbolism of speaking to you in the open air. I'm very pleased that my publisher OBP has been able to synchronize the open source publication date of my new book to coincide with that of your conference. They specialize in the humanities and the story of healthcare and information technology is fundamentally a human story. So I was delighted that they took it on. The Netherlands has been the home of many pioneering initiatives in our field, including those of my great colleague, Jan van Bemmel, who was an international pioneer of clinical signal processing and medical informatics. I first met him in the early 1970s when visiting the TNO Research Institute in Utrecht in context of my then focus on the mathematical modeling of clinical physiology. It is wonderful that the Netherlands is taking on early leadership in the creation of national affiliate organizations of open air. This candlestick beside me is the work of Jörg Jensen from nearby Denmark and was given to me by Niels Rossing when he came to England to give a talk at the formal opening of my new department at UCL in 1996, I think it was. Niels was the organizing genius of the European Union's Advanced Informatics in Medicine initiative in the late 1980s, where open air began. Also beside me is the certificate of incorporation of the Open Air Foundation in 2003. My book is akin to an Aboriginal songline combining stories of the past, present and future creation of our field. It's been a four year example of Think in Ink, discovering the book by writing it. Open Air has, in similar vein, been about learning how to do something by doing it. I hope the book will be both useful and in parts fun to read. There must be some 500 people who are mentioned in the course of its pages and indexed there. It would be improper to select from these names here, but all are warmly acknowledged. A warm thank you to all of you who have made it possible and contributed in so many ways. Rachel and Sharef will reflect on their experience of the book. Rachel has read the penultimate manuscript twice, she tells me, over recent months and brought fresh eyes and experience to think about how it might prove a useful resource both for open air and more widely. Sheriff, formerly my doctoral student at UCL, has switched roles and been akin to a sheriff in supervising and regulating the writing of the book, chapter by chapter, over three evolving drafts. At my stage of life, in the changing world of the information society that is coming, one is wise to both listen to one's children and students and those who one serves and focus on helping future leaders to find their own feet and voice. Thank you to both of them for bringing the book to you today on its date of publication and over to them here. Bye for now. So David would like to thank everyone that's contributed within the community, you know, financially and in, in other ways to this book being published today. And you can use the QR codes to download it and, you know, actually read it. It's open published, so it's free. Um, those of you that would like to buy a paper copy, that will be available as well. And at a future event or events, David will be joining us to do Q&A and readings. But I'd like to hand over to Sharef because you've been on the journey with David for many years, and I know you've got some reflections in tribute to David. Um, thanks for that. Uh, well, let's see if I can finish this without crying. Um, <laughs> hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sheriff Arakan. 
and I'm addressing you today to take part in the launch of Professor David Ingram's book, Healthcare in the Information Society. Um, I had the privilege of being David's last PhD student at UCL, University College London, um, where I completed my thesis under his supervision, and my PhD um, was on the integration of open air with artificial intelligence. And 16 years after that, um, I'm still in London, and I've been working for Ocean Health Systems, and I've been a member of the open air community for, I think, slightly more than 20 years now, um, ever since it was founded. So given all that history and background, um, I think you could say that I had a front row seat to witness David's contributions to academia, to industry, to open air, and beyond that, to medical informatics. And for those of you who may not know who Professor David Ingram is, I would introduce him as, personally, not only one of the founders of open air, but the person who made open air possible. Now, I know that that's a big statement. It is a really strong claim, and I do not mean to dismiss the huge amount of work that was put into open air for almost two decades by the members of this community, which now includes you as well. What I mean to say is Professor David Ingram provided the shelter, the identity, the wisdom, and the credibility without which all that effort from the members of this community wouldn't have necessarily led to the success of open air that we are all enjoying today. And even though open air is a global success that is growing every day, I don't think it is my place to say that it is David's life's work. Because in the 16 years I have known him, I also witnessed him accomplish many amazing things, some of which is starting the um, Open Eyes Foundation by taking part in it. Most recently, he's been working with some brilliant people um, to make affordable eyeglasses, um, eyewear glasses available to underprivileged um, and developing nations for children and adults equally. And the very fact that, even though it is not my place, I said, the very fact that we are here today together and excited to talk about open air and possibilities, what we can do with it, proves that Professor Ingram made something extraordinary to become reality. Again, I don't think it is my place to say exactly how he did that, but I know for a fact that he put everything about that journey into his book. So let me tell you a little bit about the book. So when David, um, sometime at the beginning of the pandemic, told me that he was going to write a book, I thought about medical informatics, I thought, oh, that will be a book about the history of open air. When he shared the first draft and later um, other revisions, and as I kept reading them, I came to realize that it was not a book about the history of open air. Instead, it was an incredibly comprehensive treatment of everything about information in medicine and in healthcare in a way only David can bring together. And open air was just a part of that big picture. In his book, David brings together the history, the philosophy, science, people, projects, and provides a complete picture of a very complex landscape of healthcare informatics from many perspectives. And as his PhD student and as someone who is really proud to call himself his friend, I would say that is almost a perfect reflection of Professor Ingram's unique style of leadership. Because David doesn't point at a direction and ask you to get there. Instead, he makes it possible for you to see all the directions you may want to go. And after you pick one of them, he makes everything in his power on every step of the way. And he doesn't stop until you get there. And in the same spirit, therefore, his book is not 
a manual to accomplish success in healthcare or IT. Not about a single definition of success. It is instead a guide that lets you take a step back from whatever challenge you're working on, take a look at it from all the relevant perspectives, angles, based on all the relevant variables and factors, and let you find a solution to the problem you're tackling. And in my humble opinion, it is why it is such a rare and precious resource. And as you've seen, um, David's generosity isn't limited to putting a lifetime of accomplishment and wisdom in a book, but he actually went beyond that and he made sure that the book is published as open access. As Rachel said, it means that anybody who wants to read it can access and read the book. If it rings a bell in the spirit of open air, you can see uh, the influence um, of David Ingram in it as well. But uh, in my opinion, the, 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 the other beauty of the book is that um, open air community returned David's generosity and it was published as open access because the community crowdfunded the publication of it. But I have a um, personal note, even though it is open access, I would really appreciate if you could consider getting yourselves a paid copy so that other books based on that income can be published in the same way that David's book was published as open access in a way you will be helping him carry the mission forward. So I think that's all I would like to share with you, but as a parting request, I would appreciate if you could put your hands together for Professor David Ingram and his community and congratulate the accomplishment of a fantastic outcome. Please make sure that David hears you.